Hello and welcome to the KSS Free Class Submarine Chat, also known as the Dosan and Chang Ho Class Submarine. This is a South Korean submarine. The first one has just been commissioned and has actually launched a ballistic missile during a test. This is very significant and it's the first AIP equipped submarine in the world to have a ballistic missile capability and cruise missiles in vertical launch tubes. I think this is going to be a trend. Lots of navies are going to be looking at it. This chat is uh, not scripted, as you can tell already. Um, I have prepared some materials, so let's get on with it. Should just mention, I did recently write an article for navalnews.com. The cutaway illustration that I'm gonna use for a lot of this chat is also on that website. Check it out, I'll leave a link in the comments. You can see the cutaway in full resolution. The South Korean Navy is really interesting itself. I call it the Dark Horse Navy, of any Navy really, but certainly in Asia. It's much more sophisticated, better equipped, and larger than most people realize. On the surface, they have very sophisticated warships. The one at the top in the foreground is a South Korean warship. You can see the US Navy influences. And at the bottom, you've got the Docto class, which is a amphibious warfare and light aircraft carrier. Currently a helicopter carrier, it could operate jets. It's gonna be a new carrier called a CVX. That is a proper aircraft carrier with F-35 fighter jets. You can see the British influence of Twin Islands and so on. More relevant to us though, is the submarine fleet. It's one of the largest submarine fleets in the world. Firstly, why does South Korea feel the need to have such a large and capable submarine fleet? Well, it's surrounded by potentially hostile countries. The main and most obvious one is North Korea, which is the other half of the Korean Peninsula. The two countries are still technically at war. And although there is, if you like, peace, it's certainly still um, some hostilities from time to time, including submarine operations. The North Korean Navy is one of the largest submarine fleets in the world, arguably the largest submarine fleet in the world if you just count the number of boats. A lot of the boats, however, are quite small and all of them are quite basic. A lot of them are very old, but any submarine is a threat. And in particular, at the top here, you've got ballistic missile submarines, also not nuclear powered, but they don't have AIP. Um, you have vintage Romeo class attack submarines and you have various coastal and midget submarines. Over to the west, you have China. This submarine fleet is not technically as big as the North Korean one, but certainly a lot more capable. And there are specialist submarines, a large number of uh, patrol submarines, including ones with air independent power. In fact, the most air dependent, uh, most submarines with air independent power in the world is the Chinese Navy. Um, they also have nuclear attack submarines and ballistic missile submarines, nuclear powered. Um, so the Chinese Navy has a much larger and, and, in a sense, more impressive fleet of submarines than South Korea. Japan, off to the east, is another country. From the Western perspective, we might think that Japan and South Korea ought to be natural allies, certainly in the face of North Korea and China. In practice, the two countries don't get along that well at all and only rarely collaborate in naval theater. Japanese submarines, also non-nuclear, but among the most sophisticated and, and effective submarines in the world, probably. One important caveat, the Japanese submarines do not carry offensive weapons other than torpedoes. Um, so while their submarines are probably more sophisticated even than the KSS-3, they don't have the capabilities that we're gonna talk about in this video. Should also mention Russia, of course, up to the north, you probably guessed that's in a different league. I'm not going to illustrate all the different types of submarine, but it is, uh, you know, there's no comparison really between Russia and, and South Korea. Okay. So South Korea has been building submarines for many years. So the latest project isn't just out of nowhere. It started in the 80s with midget submarine designs. The Dolgore class submarine was uh, built from 1982 and served until 2016. It's actually a German design carried a couple of torpedoes and midget submarines like this, it's very small as you can see, 
normally used for special forces operations. These ones were actually used by the by the Navy as attack submarines in lieu of proper submarines, if you like. There were also um, some Italian built Cosmos SX-506 or 506K uh, class submarines acquired in the 80s, locally built again. These were not actually operated by the Navy, but rather by special forces. And the roles are quite different, really. But both these submarines were constructed locally, and that would have gained a lot of experience for the South Korean uh, companies involved. For bigger submarines starting in the late 80s, they started building the Type 209, which is a German design, not from the same manufacturer as the, the one on the previous slide. This submarine is still the backbone of many navies around the world. It's still very competitive. South Korea built quite a few themselves, and they even exported their version of it to Indonesia. The South Korean ones are not identical to those in, in any other country, but it is broadly a Type 209 class submarine, and they're still in service. Following on from the 209, they started building the 214. Again, this is a German design. In fact, it's the direct follow on to the 209. It has a significant improvement. It has air independent power. That was followed by the KSS 3. This is the submarine that the article's about. This submarine does borrow a lot from the 209 and the 214, but it is in no way a direct development of either of those submarines. It is a Korean design, quite different in detail. Also incorporates technologies and, and equipment and, and help from other countries, notably France, Spain, and UK, and I'm sure other countries as well. The first one was launched in 2018. Two have now been launched and as i said one has uh, been commissioned and has done a test launch or certainly an ejection of a domestically built ballistic missile so this is my cutaway let's look at the submarine and see what's what's different about it first in terms of size it's worth noting that it's quite a large submarine as far as non-nuclear submarines go and its length is quite long it's 83 meters long a large part of that is because it has the additional insert for the vertical launch tubes. More significantly, I think it's got a beam of 9.6 meters. That's much bigger than the 214 or 209 designs, and it allows it to have three deck levels. The weapons in the vertical launch tubes are, come in two types. There is a submarine launch cruise missile, the Hyun Mu-3, and a ballistic missile, the Hyun Mu-4-4. This, the cruise missile is broadly similar to the Tomahawk. I think it's rocket powered, it's indigenously developed, but its role and, and operation would be similar to a Tomahawk. The ballistic missile is more unusual. The photograph I have there is not the exact one that would be in the submarine. We haven't got a photo of that yet. I think it might be different in some details, but it's related and, and gives you a pretty good idea of what it is. The ballistic missile can reach its targets much faster. South Korea does not have nuclear weapons, so it's not nuclear armed. Should also mention the BrahMos missile. This is an Indian missile. It wouldn't be used in South Korean service, I don't think. There's no plans for that or nothing that I've heard. But if they do sell submarines to India as part of the P-75I program, then you can expect Brahmas to be carried in the vertical launch tubes. Should mention that the KSS-3 is not the only submarine out there that is not nuclear and is carrying ballistic missiles. North Korea has a couple of types, notably the Gore class. This can only carry one missile though, and it's only a test platform. I think it would give them a limited operational capability, but it's essentially a test submarine. It's also, although a new build submarine, technologically much more backward and does not have AIP. In China, your type 032 class, this is actually bigger than the KSS-3 and can carry ballistic missile, also does have AIP. However, it's a test submarine again. And I think that the AIP and the ballistic missile are just cohabiting a, a, a hull. As well as the vertical launch tubes, the KSSS-3 has six torpedo tubes. 
These can carry the K731 White Shark torpedo. That's an indigenous Korean heavyweight torpedo. Also has interesting propulsion. The air independent power is essentially a German fuel cell system, same as on the 214. That requires LOX or liquid oxygen stored in two tanks underneath the fuel cells and also hydrogen flasks, which are carried outside of the hull. These are actually under a casing, so you don't normally see them, but they're they're outside the hull. And that's where the hydrogen is produced by the chemical reaction goes before it's uh, got rid of. They have batteries in two sets, pretty normal. These are lead acid batteries. Uh, they still require diesel generators to be recharged. So it has two of those. How the ARP normally works is when it's running, you can save the batteries and you can drive the electric motor directly from the ARP and also provide all the other uh, things that need power. So it provides a slow speed, low power option, but allows the submarine to be submerged for much longer. The diesel generators are just for charging the batteries. Yeah, it's, it's pretty typical of AIP. I have got a video on AIP, explains it in much more detail and how it's used, myth bustings, a lot of misconceptions about it. I'll put a link in the, in the description. For sonar, it's got quite a lot. Essentially the full suite you'd expect or hope for for an advanced submarine, non-nuclear submarine. It's got the main sonar array in the, in the chin also got collision avoidance, mine avoidance, active sonar. It's also got um, flank arrays with the passive ranging sonar along the top. That's the three rectangles on top. One of them is visible and the other two are behind the casing. It's got a towed array at the back. So essentially the full suite of sonar. A lot of these sonars uh, are developed in South Korea. Um, probably very good, pretty impressive. For Mars, this is quite interesting as well. Like the latest submarines in other countries, it is does not have a traditional periscope. Instead, it's got two optronics masts. The masts themselves, the optronics ones, are purchased from France, also has a Spanish electronic support measure mast, and the rest of the masts, I think, are South Korean in origin. The hoisting system to raise them and lower them is also South Korean. So it's a good mix of different countries, actually. The blue wire coming out the back in this uh, image is actually a towed aerial, uh, floats to surface and uh, acts as an aerial. The submarine has anechoic coatings or tiles. I don't know the origin of these, possibly locally developed. It's definitely a sign of a very modern submarine. A lot of non-nuclear submarines don't have these, only, only a few countries produce them. Uh, Japan, obviously, US, UK, and uh, Russia. Um, and you see them on the submarines of a few countries, but a lot of submarines don't have them. What they do is they absorb uh, active sonar, which reduces this, the, um, the sonar signature against active sonar. It doesn't have a particular effect on passive sonar. Or it doesn't make the submarine quieter unless you combine extra technologies with them. So that's the KSS-3 batch one. There's gonna be some improved boats uh, called batch two. Basically it's boats three and four of the class. These will have an increased capacity on their VLS. So they'll have 10 instead of six uh, missile tubes. They'll also have lithium ion batteries. This is a major step forward. Currently only Japan has actually put that on a, a large submarine. Uh, Russia possibly has on some submarines, but not, uh, not in the same way. I mean, just that's just an aside. But lithium ion technology, the reason it hasn't been adopted very widely on submarines yet is because of the safety concerns. There is a lot of uh, safety and testing that has been done. South Korea has developed its own lithium ion battery technology, which it has tested and believes is now safe for submarines. And so it'll be fitted on boats three and four. And that's why I mentioned earlier that the batteries currently are lead acid like in the other side. Also, I would guess that the submarine is going to be larger and longer. I don't have the exact stats on that, so consider it to, to be confirmed, but it's going to have more, more weapons. Um, I would expect it to be larger. 
Okay, that was the chat. Hopefully you found it interesting. Um, just say again, it's unscripted. It shows in places I know. If you'd like me to do more chats, uh, please give me suggestions. Thank you for listening.